sides. We got four over here. <laughs> All right. Hi, I'm Tyler Morton. And today I'm here to talk to you guys about my family and bring you into my life just a little bit. A question I have to start is, do you guys know what the ideal American family is? Well, I can tell you. It is a married couple with 2.5 children and a family pet. They live in a home with at least three bedrooms that is surrounded by a white picket fence. Now take a second to think about how your family compares to that. Well, for me, my family doesn't compare at all. And I know that's the same for some of you as well. Compared to the American dream, my family would probably be considered the American nightmare. <laughs> and here's my family. This picture was taken in 2012 at my high school graduation from De La Salle High School. Picture in the back is my mother dressed in all white. Um, and she called herself a classy woman. So every event, holiday, she dresses all white because she said it's a heavenly color. Um, the four youngest and smallest people you see in the front are my nieces and nephews. So therefore, everyone else in the photo is either a brother or a sister of mine. And the crazy thing about that is, that's still not all of us. I have a brother who lives in Florida with his wife and his son, and another older brother who passed away due to medical issues. My mother right there gave birth to 11 children, and she took care of all of us by herself for most of our lives. A lot of people love to ask her, how did you do this? And she'll tell you, she doesn't even know. <laughs> but she gives credit to God for keeping her sane. And I give credit to her for keeping us together. My family, my home life was, was different than a lot of other childhoods, as you can guess. Um, before my family, before my older brother moved to Florida with his wife, I stayed in a three bedroom apartment with all 10 of my siblings and my mother. Our apartment was small, crowded, and noisy, but I loved it. It was all I knew. Something was always going on in the house that made it never a dull moment with these people. My brother at the end right there, his name is Mac, he has to be the biggest character I know. He couldn't cook, but he loved to cook. <laughs> so we had a frequent fire in our house. All the time. <laughs> My family did everything together. <clears throat> We all went to the same schools. We went to the church that was right across the street and even the park. My mom was so family oriented, my older brothers and sisters couldn't even leave the house unless taking a younger sibling with. <laughs> so we actually did everything together. My mom loved us being together so much. On our outing, she would pack us all up in her small compact two-door car and take us to the Mall of America because that's where families went. For example, one story is we went to the Mall of America to an amusement park called Camp Snoopy, if any of you guys are familiar with that. That was the amusement park at the Mall of America before they ruined most of our childhood and changed it <laughs> to Nickelodeon Universe. <laughs> My mom wasn't rich by any, any, any form of the word. So we weren't able to get unlimited wristbands like most children were. My mom had just enough money to get all her kids to be able to ride one ride each, but that was enough for us. We didn't care about the rides. We just wanted to get out of the house. So, towards the ending of our trip, my mom, like a group leader would do at like a summer camp or something, she counts how many kids she has <laughs> to make sure that we're all there. <laughs> but like you probably guessed, we weren't. My younger sister, Bianca, was missing. And she's the one right here with the bracelet right in front of my mom and the wife. And just like my brother, she had her own unique things about her. She always went missing, so it wasn't a surprise. <laughs> my mom frantically, started looking for her, because at the Mall of America, there's so many people, you can get lost and never found again. So she frantically started looking for my little sister, and to no avail, she couldn't find her. So she actually split everyone up to go look for Bianca in groups, like Scooby-Doo, when they <laughs> branch off and try to solve a mystery. She did that with us. And we went out and tried to find Bianca. Me and my, me and my older sister, Courtney, right here, actually found Bianca. Bianca would sleep inside a photo booth, <laughs> covered with the curtain, so that's why we couldn't find her. <laughs> so we found her, and we bring her back to the crew, 
My mom was very good on punishment, so uh, Bianca, of course, got a spanking in front of everybody at the mall. <laughs> we all packed up into that car, and we went home. These are the small stories that me and my family have that make us who we are, and that's why I love them. Life for me was almost perfect. I had everything, I thought, but something was missing. I didn't have a dad, but I had a dad. And as confusing as that sounds, I knew who my dad was and he wasn't always missing. This is my dad holding baby Tyler when I was much, much, much younger. So if he can be there when I was this young, why couldn't he be there as I grown up? What didn't he like about my family that made him leave? What did we do wrong to him that made him not feel welcome? I didn't know because he was once there and my mom was smiling. So it seemed like we were pretty happy. So for him to leave confused me. For many years I looked to see what happened or what that my mom did to make him leave. But as I realized that it probably was nothing and later on in my early teens, I began not to care. I began to become angry at him and resent him. And that resentment put me in a very dark place. Not only did I resent him as my father, I resented all African American males who tried to have any influence on my life. And this showed in school, in, in, at the park, at church, any African American male who tried to teach me something, tell me something, or give me something, got met with some of the worst attitude you could ever imagine. This put me in a really dark place. I began to get in trouble in school and outside of school, and my mom didn't have any way to go for me. So the only way she felt that she could fix this problem was to hit it right at the source. She called my father and pleaded with him to try to get me to come out of the stage that I was in. For some reason, my dad wanted to take on the challenge. He began to speak to me. He began to call. He wanted me to come visit him all the time. But I didn't want to. I still resented him. I wanted to make him feel how he made us feel for so many years. And after years of avoiding him, not answering calls, not going to visit, I felt like I did that. I felt that he got a taste of his own medicine. Problem solved, right? I got what I wanted, revenge. He was, felt just as bad as I did. No, the void was still there. I was still angry. I was still mad because I was still missing my dad. I wanted him. And the only way I felt that I can have him is if I forgave him. So that's what I had to do. I wanted to start fresh with my father, a new relationship. I wanted to look past everything he had did to me, or for that matter, had it done for me. But I didn't want to forget. I never wanted to forget how that made me feel or anything of that nature. Because when you forget something someone did after you forgave them, you open yourself up to be susceptible or vulnerable for that wrong to happen to you again. So I never wanted to forget, but I wanted to forgive for my happiness, for my sanity, for my life. So I did that. Me and my father began to speak every day on the phone. We talked about everything. This guy was me. Everything that I said, he said. Everything that I felt, he felt. He was my dad, and I knew that. We began to have some of the best conversations that I ever had. I introduced them to my friends, past girlfriends I had, teachers here. He was a great guy, and I'm glad I forgave him. But that forgiveness wasn't for him. That forgiveness was for me. I forgave him so I could be happy.